This is not a drill. This is not a rumor from Reddit where somebody heard from someone's best friend's cousin's uncle's roommate heard a rumor that Vanity Fair is reporting that Ben Affleck is returning as Batman for the Flash movie. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comments section. Let me know your take on the idea of Ben Affleck returning to the DCEU as Bruce Wayne in the Flash movie. As I go into this, I want to be very clear. This is coming from Vanity Fair. There's been tons of rumors, speculation, gossip stuff for a long time about Ben Affleck returning, but this is coming from Vanity Fair. These are one of the top film journalist journalistic outlets out there. They don't just run with rumors, they have actual sources and they talked to the director himself. So this is real. People love to run with headlines saying things are confirmed that are not confirmed. This is confirmed. This is the proper usage of that phrase. So I'm going to go through the actual report and what they say in the article itself. The first section of the article just gives some background information on the project itself and the director who previously did it in It Chapter 2. Then it gets to the good stuff right here where it says, Affleck got the script at the end of last week and agreed this week to join the project. Then continues on, and this is quoting the director himself. He's a very substantial part of the emotional impact of the movie. The interaction and relationship between Barry and Affleck's Wayne will bring an emotional level that we haven't seen before. It's Barry's movie. It's Barry's story, but the characters are more related than we think. They both lost their mothers to murder, and that's one of the emotional vessels of the movie. That's where Affleck's Batman kicks in. But here's where things get a little bit interesting. If you read the way it's phrased at the beginning, it says this, the Argo director's brooding dark night is coming back for one more movie. So one more movie, it says, with Affleck agreeing to return as Bruce Wayne in the upcoming big screen version of The Flash, Vanity Fair has learned. Continuing on, Muschietti, and that's the director, said it wouldn't work as well for him to venture into the company of other Batman without having Affleck as the starting point. He's the baseline. He's the part of that unaltered state. Before we jump into Barry's adventure, the director said, there's a familiarity there. So if you don't know what all of that is referring to, it's been previously reported and confirmed Michael Keaton will be appearing in this movie as Batman 89, as this older Bruce Wayne, as the storyline that they're going with is going to be heavily influenced by Flashpoint, a plot line about Barry Allen going back in time to save his mother from being killed in chi when he was a child. Um, and in doing so, it creates this alternate timeline. That's kind of the, the classic Flashpoint storyline. And in it, that storyline, uh, Bruce Wayne was the one that was killed instead of Thomas Wayne. And therefore, Thomas Wayne became Batman. And so this headline right here, what the director is saying is like, we had to have Ben Affleck in on this movie because you have to establish kind of the baseline, the familiarity, what is normal, what does Barry Allen know, and that's Batfleck. So that when we start breaking the timeline and going to different places and we see Michael Keaton, there's a change there. There's a contrast between the two universes. And so that's the reason that Affleck needed to be in the movie which makes a lot of sense. The article closes out with Barbara Muschietti, and that's the director's sister, as well as kind of a producer on the project that he works with a lot. And she said this about Ben Affleck personally and what kind of changed here. She said, there have been some all sorts of stories and things he said himself about having a very hard time playing Batman, and it had been a difficult time for him. I think it was more about a difficult time in his life when he when we approached him. He's now in a very different time in his life. He was very open to it, which was a bit of a surprise to us. It was a question mark. We are all humans and go through great times in our lives and terrible times in our lives. Right now, he's in a place where he can actually enjoy being Batman. And then the last thing it says is, it's a pivotal role, but at the same time, it's a fun part. Okay, so let's put this all together. This is the director himself, as well as his sister producer saying, Ben Affleck, 
Last week, read the script, liked it. He signed on this week. Ben Affleck is returning. Key thing. Second one, they keep emphasizing it is a very important, pivotal role. Seems to be kind of that emotional connection with Barry because they both lost family members in their childhood. But the impression that I get is that he's a bookend. He's there at the beginning. He's probably there at the end or he's there at the beginning and he's gone at the end because of Flashpoint changes things. So it erases Batfleck. That seems to be implied there. But I imagine whatever happens at the beginning, huge emotional connection between Barry and Bruce Wayne. But I'm not sure if we're actually getting Batman from the language that they used. I'm not sure if that's that's going to happen in the film. And then kind of the other personal side to it, it, it sounds like Affleck's leaving Batman was because he was just in a really bad place in his life, which I don't really want to touch on here, but seems like he's really turned things around over the last couple of years and has stabilized a lot. And therefore now he's open to playing the role again. And you can even listen to the interviews from when he was doing The Way Back, which was very much a personal project for him working through his own demons. And he discusses like, oh man, I had a great time on Batman v Superman. And you know, they let me wear the bat suit to my kid's birthday party and it was great. And then somewhere after that, things weren't so good. Justice League, which seemed to have been a terrible little face of time for every single person involved in that project. And that's where he just totally dropped out, got fried. But it's been three years, three years since he stopped playing Batman. And it seems like they came back to him now that he's a happier, happier place in life. And based on what they said there, he's actually pretty open to it. So what do I think about all this? Um, In general, I think that this is a win for the Flash movie. If you're going to do the Flashpoint storyline, their logic, there's all sound that you need that baseline. Batfleck is a great way to do that. So I think the logic is sound to get him to do that. I thoroughly enjoyed Batfleck. I want to see as much of him in this role kind of as we can get. So all that feels like a win to me. I don't, it feels a lot to me like maybe we're going to try and do some magic with the timeline to to boot Batfleck and maybe Pattinson, whatever they're going to do with it. I don't know about that. Uh, um, erasing timelines. Don't know that I want that to happen. But in general, the idea of bringing Batfleck in, I think that that's a win for the project. Um, the project in general, however, It's very uncomfortable to me that there haven't been public statements about the weird stuff with Ezra Miller a few months back, where he like choked a fan, just seemed really unstable. And everybody has bad moments. There's all kinds of incidents that happen that you just see one camera angle from it. It gives off an impression. But you explain what happened. You issue an apology. You own your mistakes. You don't just go, I remember that time I grabbed the fan by the throat and ignored it. That's weird. That's a weird thing to do. So even giving as much benefit of the doubt that it was just a weird misunderstanding, they should address it in some sort of way. So that's the thing that's actually kind of almost overshadows this whole thing. We're like, look, Michael Keaton's going to be in it. Hey, look, Ben Affleck's going to be in it. We're going to do this and that and that and all kinds of crazy storylines and back to the future influenced at one point in time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the star of your movie seems to be a bad guy. And I've been a bad guy. But I had to own it and apologize. So it just seems very strange that they, they haven't done something with that. And so that that always is going to be a little bit of a, a shadow over this project until they have them go out there on a PR tour trying to make amends for whatever that viral video was of him choking a fan out of the blue. So as for Batfleck, that itself Taken at his very cool news. And we'd heard murmurs. We It seemed like this might be in the works and that he was kind of coming around. And even on my podcast a few weeks back, um, Griffin, the guy I do it with, was talking about how there's all sorts of rumors about how Affleck's getting back into shape and he's probably doing stuff for Justice League. And it seems like he's much more open to Batman stuff. So it's not as big of a surprise as it would have been a year ago, but big information. Let me know what you thought down below in the comment section. You can read the article at that link down below. You can check out some of my Batman coverage right over there and keep talking movies too much.